All right, today we're gonna to talk about Betaflight 4.2 filter strategy. In all my videos to date, I've talked about moving the sliders both together up to a 1.5 for tuning, general good slider, you know, enable the RPM filter, have the dynamic notch tweaks, things of that nature, the basic setups, then go through the tune. We have all that done on this quad. Then we're gonna go ahead and look at how much really the low pass filters on the gyro are actually doing and seeing what happens when we just disable them all together and see what happens when we just have the notch filters, RPM and dynamic, on the gyro and just having the slider enabled for the D-term, which obviously has the low pass filters. So this should be cool. Engines are it's a brand new GMB 4S pack on each of these flights. First time ever flown. I have the Mr. Steel S3 props on here as well. Trying to get plenty of prop wash moves. Pretty good. I mean, I have to really try to fall into it to get it to do the wash. sloppy. See some smooth forward flight. Good on throbbles. Pretty good on anti-gravity there. A little, little bit of bobble. All right, let's bring this in. Let 1,200 milliamps drawn out of these. 1,500 milliamp pack. 1,300 milliamps. Whoa! Engines disarmed. So we're gonna go to our Betaflight app here. And go ahead and connect. And go down to the PIDS tab, filters, and you can see we have them at 1.5. Ah. Go ahead and just disable all these sliders. So, or disable all these low pass filters right here, and that will, the slider still shows there, but once we save, I guess it will disappear. I don't know about that. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, it still shows it. It's interesting. Uh, looks like when you disable the low passes, this goes to 0.97, little, probably a little bug there. Um, just little gooey stuff that could be cleaned up a little bit. Let's take our D-term filter down to like a 1.2. Let's see what that does for low passes on it. Yeah, 84 to 204. That seems reasonable. Let's see what that looks like. Just to compensate a little bit for the lower filtering we're going to have there on the gyro. Okay, on this flight we have the gyro low pass filters turned off. Let's see how she goes. Engines armed. Let's check out some. A little bit of shake there. When I was kneeling into those prop wash turns. Seems a little bit better. Whew. I'll tell you, these S1s are great, or S3s are great for prop wash, but they are not. Not great for punch.
do some smooth forward flight stuff, see what she looks like. Let's go back the same way we were before. You can still draw out some if you sit right into it. It's there. Alright, well, I'm getting up to my pack voltage already. Had some screaming um, Screaming um, punch outs there. Let me get back. 1300. 1400. Engines disarmed. Okay, so you can see what we had there for flight. Let's go check out the log, see how much those low passes were actually doing. I have a special debug recorded on this uh, that you can do as well on yours. And then uh, let's take a look at the traces, just kind of see what we've had. Motors. It's cool out today. It's like, I would say it's like 60 degrees. Uh, motors are, in either case, are, they're cold. They're, I mean, there's a little bit of warmth to them. It's more than ambient air, but they're not hot whatsoever. And, but on the same breath, these RCX motors, they just don't really ever get hot. So it doesn't really matter what I throw at them. So the motor temp thing is a little off uh, with these motors because they, I guess, just dissipate heat so damn good. I don't know. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at these logs, but before we do, to be clear on what settings we're talking about, the differential between them, what we're going to show is this versus this filter setup where we have no low-pass filters on the gyro at all, and we just slid down the D-term low-pass filter from a 1.5 to a 1.2. So popping back over to the logs, just quickly here, what I did is zoomed all the way out. I'm on trace template setup number four of the UAV Tech trace templates. I'll make a link to the card in the upper right if you're not familiar with that. And you can see the motor commands. Basically, we're looking at the thickness in the signals going between. You can see there's very little difference between the two. There's very little difference between the amount of D-term uh, magnification of the noise. If I throw both those logs in the plasma tree and it compresses and, and it processes the entire log, you can see here's A is as the 1.5 filter slider settings. This B here is with the low pass is turned off. This is the filter gyro signal. And you can see the difference between the two. It's really minimal in regard to the attenuation difference between these two. Same thing, this is the D-term on A, D-term on B. Again, this is 1.5 sliders. This is no sliders or basically the gyro low-pass filters turned off altogether. If I look at the pit error between the two, so this is how much the gyro signal deviated from the sticks. And when you're looking down here, this is stick movements. So this is A again, 1.5 sliders on the gyro. This is no low passes on the gyro. So this is just stick movements down here, and, and this can vary based on how much I move my sticks. However, up here, this is prop wash. So anything, you can see I'm hitting about 80 hertz prop wash up in here, up in this zone with this quad, so that's, that's pretty good. I'm really getting those vibrations up in hertz, that means it's reacting really quick to it. And you can see there's slightly less, you know, the intense, as it goes to white, that means there's more intensity, that means the gyro signal was varying more at that certain hertz value. So you can see there were slightly more at the 1.5 sliders than there was at the no low passes on the gyro filter slider settings here. So to round it off, the low pass filters on the gyro just really don't do that much work. All this time, and most of the time since the dynamic notch has been introduced to beta flight, the dynamic notch and now the RPM notches and the dynamic notch together are doing, I would say, 90-95% of the attenuation on the gyro signal. However, the low passes still have more delay on the gyro signal than the dynamic notch and the RPM notches together. So it really just makes sense to turn those off. They're not doing that much. The debug mode, you can check it out for yourself, is dynamic LPF, and that will show you some different traces. Actually, I did a whole Patreon video on this, and you can see the thumbnail from that here. So if you're interested in some details and really looking at the differences between the low pass filters and the notches and the dynamic notch and the RPM notches to see not only how ineffective the low pass filters were and how much delay they added, but also the 
effectiveness of the dynamic notch versus the RPM notches, you can go check out that video. But the bottom line is, if you see the raw signal coming in, you can see that's the red here. You can see this line here, this secondary squiggly line, you can see it's offset. That's the delay of the low passes. And you can see the attenuation difference is really not that much between the raw signal and then that secondary signal, which is delayed. And it's, you know, the amplitude is crushed down a little bit, but really not that much. And that's the low pass filter. So there's adding all that delay and it's really just tweaking it all very little and then you can see the effectiveness of the dynamic notch in this example of how much that completely smooths out that line and gets rid of all those high frequency uh, vibrations which are the motor peak noise now in looking at the delay differences between the two different setups depends on how low you bring this slider when you make that adjustment if you would bring this down to a d 1.0 on the slider here, it's basically gonna be about the same amount of filter delay based on my filter cap tool. Again, I'll make a link to that in the upper right. So I went down to about a 1.2, that's about a 0.3 millisecond uh, savings. So it's not, it doesn't sound like a lot and it's not gonna be something you feel on the sticks, but to the machine, it makes a difference because it's really flying the craft through the prop wash and making those adjustments. You're not, you're just kind of holding the sticks steady. So it does make a difference to the craft. If I would have left the slider at 1.5 and just turned off, then you'd see about a 0.7 millisecond saving. So that's pretty significant. Anywhere from a 0.3 to a point, you know, 0.5, you're gonna notice some differential there in prop wash performance increase. So check it out. Obviously mileage is gonna vary. If you have a quad with a ton of noise on it, broadband noise, you know, I would probably not recommend this strategy. Uh, you'd probably wanna try to adjust your mechanical setup is usually as props is the issue. Uh, change to different props, go with some name brands, things of that nature. But it, if you have a fairly well uh, built and the noise is peaked and you've kind of looked at it and uh, you don't have any oscillations or weird things in flight or you've looked at it in logs, uh, definitely I would embark on this strategy of just turning those low passes off and then the only slider you have is the D-term one. See if you can get uh, anywhere from a 1.2 to a 1.5, uh, 2.0 is probably pushing it, but maybe if it's really low attenuation noise, you'll be able to get away with it. To give you a sense, this is the spectrogram on the roll axis for the raw gyro signal. So you can see here, it's not broad base. We have the nice dip that we're expecting to see anywhere from you know 30 Hertz up to 100, 150, depending on a, a five inch. So you don't have a ton of noise here that's peaked and all that kind of stuff. And we do have these peak here, which is the motor band, but it's well-defined and stuff that the RPM filter and the dynamic notch are just going to be jumping all over that to uh, crush it out. All right, everybody. Well, that is it. As always, thanks, and I hope this helped. And, like, smash that like button, please. Because then, I, if, if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So, do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better?